thanks for being here and thanks uh, to the organizers for letting me be here. I will talk about METS, or the uh, Metrics Equipments Digital Signature, uh, joint work with the METS team. And basically what we're going to look at is, uh, we're going to look at the signature that comes from matrix code equivalents. And as such, I will uh, first talk about matrix code equivalents and then subsequently talk about how to make signature from it. Although a lot has been said by Eduardo already. And then we'll see the uh, performance ones. So to talk about the matrix code equivalents, we have two main actors. And the first actor is matrix codes, the objects, and the other one are the isometries, the equivalences. So let's look at what those are. A matrix code is a k-dimensional subspace uh, equipped with the rank metric. So uh, the metric is given simply by the rank of the matrix. And we're considering n by n matrices. So for example, here is a, a five-dimensional code um, with matrices from six by four dimensions. And uh, for equivalence, we of course need two codes, so let's consider another code, D. So what would be an equivalence between those two? Well, to be an equivalence, we need uh, a linear map uh, that maps uh, code words of a certain rank to another code word of the same rank. So that preserves a metric or an isometry. And we're going to look at a specific kind of isometry. There are a bit more, but we focus on this bit, and that's uh, multiplying code words by GL on the left side and on the right side. Well, our matrices are four by, four by six matrices, so we will look at GL4 and GL6. And when we look at, um, in this case, A, C, B for our code word C, then we see that we always land in D. This is obvious from the numbers here. Um, but there is some, uh, it has to land in the code D, so there will be some uh, linear combination of this. And um, GL, multiplying by GL, preserves rank. So we see that this is indeed an isometry. And those are the isometries that we will consider in the talk. Sometimes uh, it's useful to not only look at this problem as a matrix rank code problem, but also at a free tensor problem so that we can borrow some results from uh, tensor isomorphism. And to do this, we place the uh, code words behind each other as can be seen here by the different colors. And then equivalence is exactly tensor isomorphism. The uh, third uh, GL that comes up in tensor isomorphism is exactly the change of basis when uh, going from C to D, uh, the linear combination I just talked about. This immediately allows us to look at the code in a different way. Because first we started with uh, splitting the code this way, but now we immediately see, once we look at the tensor, that we have two different codes showing up as well by uh, going this way or this way. And this will help us later on uh, to analyze it better. So I was talking about matrix code equivalence, but first let's look at this hardness assumption. There's basically two attacks, to, uh, two kind of attacks to um, try to break this. And the first is combinatorial. And this is uh, the same as with less. We try to find low rank uh, code words, and then we try to use the birthday paradox to map them together. And if we find two uh, code word collisions, then we can reconstruct the isometry. Then on the other hand, we also have the algebraic attacks. And for this, we make a uh, system of polynomials, and we uh, use Grubner basis techniques. So there's two ways to do this. First, we can, for example, use the tensor isomorphism uh, problem to get a trilinear system. This is one example. But then we are already in degree three. On the other hand, we can take the more coding theory perspective. And this is exactly the two different perspectives I was talking about. So we immediately say that yeah, we can go from one to the other and see what happens. And we can see that the code words A, C, I, B should be dual to the dual code of D. And then uh, we get the following asymptotic complexity, but you should know that for the algebraic, the asymptotic complexity is not a good estimator because this reaches uh, the asymptotic complexity only at really high cryptographically irrelevant parameters. So let's take a closer look at the algebraic uh, modeling. For this, we consider uh, C and D as uh, we had the free tensor, and 
we can also see it as free form. And we have the A and B uh, transformations on the left side and the change of basis we pull to the right side. So now we get equations in A, B, and T inverse. And we get M times N times K relation, one for each cell. So if we put these relations in a matrix, uh, with each row is an equation and each uh, column is a monomial. So either T, I, J inverse variable or A times B variable. Then we can row reduce this and then we get can get rid of the t inverse variables. And then we're left with a bilinear system in k times mn minus k um, equations. But now we can do this in three different ways again. And now we get a, a tri-graded system um, of this many equations and uh, a, b, and t variables. So this is basically how you look at it algebraically. And there are also some hybrid approaches, but for this one, we will refer to the specification. So now how do we make a signature out of this? Well, it was already told a lot, so I will focus mainly on the things that are different for maths as well. And well, we have an equivalence relation, we apply via Chimia, and we get a signature scheme. To do this, we uh, have a starting code C and another code D, and uh, those are a public key, and we have a secret asymmetry AB. To uh, make a signature, we make a commitment. So we have an ephemeral uh, key, A tilde, B tilde, and we create an ephemeral code, and this is our commitment, the ephemeral code. Now, whenever we get a challenge, on challenge zero, we send, um, wait, let's go back. Because we know the secret isometry, we can also create an isometry from D to C tilde. Now, when we get a challenge, and on challenge zero, we will send the ephemeral key, and on challenge one, we will send the composition, uh, and then we get soundness a half. So how do we improve the soundness? This is again by doing more in parallel. Uh, this is a bit neat. So we apply the tricks that we've seen before, multiple PKs, uh, a fixed weight, uh, a fixed weight for uh, challenge zero because we can send the seed, and indeed using a C tree. But now for the last one, um, we can also use a certain compression technique. And basically how we can see this is if we look at our, uh, all our matrix codes and the equivalence relations between this, this is a group action, and we can look at the orbits. And with uh, high probability, uh, really, high prob and really high probability in this orbit, there is um, a matrix of a specific form, uh, sorry, a code of a specific form. So we can uh, map to this code. Uh, we can create an ephemeral key by mapping to this code. And that would save us already a couple of bits because we know that this matrix is in a specific form, so we don't have to include this information. This does not break MCE because if it would break MCE, then we, would, then we could go two times, uh, make assumptions to this specific code, and then we would construct uh, an equivalence between the original objects. So now let's take a look at the performance. These are the parameter sets that we chose. Um, again, the small disclaimer, this is a reference implementation. Um, but we chose two uh, parameter sets for each, um, for each level. And the first one uh, is the one with a lower public key and signature sizes, but with a large amount of rounds. And for the second one, we chose lower amount of rounds rounds as to have faster uh, signing and verification. Uh, but yeah, then we also get large public key and signature sizes. So what are uh, the advantages um, of um, using METS? Well, we have a single hardness assumption, MCE. Uh, so this makes it uh, easier to analyze the security of uh, our crypto scheme and get more assurance for it. It's simple design and arithmetic. Everything we're doing is basically matrix multiplication, matrix inversion, and Gaussian elimination. And there's a great flexibility in sizes. So we can, uh, now we always chose NSMSK for our um, parameter sets, but of course we could play around more with this uh, as well. 
And also the T, the S, and the W will, will allow us to, um, yeah, to get a greater flexibility for a specific use case that we're doing. Now, there's also some limitations, and that's, of course, that the uh, public keys and the signature sizes are still quite large, unfortunately. And scaling to higher parameters um, will get uh, yeah, we'll get a big hit because we're working also with three-dimensional objects, so that will be a bit wrong. And furthermore, uh, the research on MCE could be more, but this is immediately also an invitation to explore this subject with us. So there's a lot of cool research uh, to be found here. And furthermore, we also uh, have ongoing work um, and that's basically we're working on a new technique to reduce the signature size. And it looks really promising because we can go from uh, like the second parameter set, we can go from 30,000 uh, bytes to only 2,000. So this is like an 84% uh, percent reduction. But we're still analyzing the security of this technique. And basically what the technique com comes down to is that we can prove our knowledge of the secret isometry not by sending uh, the secret isometry or like some uh, like the, the scrambling of the secret isometry, but we can also prove our knowledge of a secret isometry by uh, sending two collisions uh, that we uh, between code words. So two code words C, two co code words in um, oh sorry, two code words in D and two in C tilde, and by sending this, and we can uh, get this really compact by uh, just giving the linear combination. By sending this, we can uh, signif significantly reduce the uh, signature size. But again, we really should, uh, we are really busy analyzing the security uh, better and also if this is always possible uh, and if this uh, doesn't cause any trouble. But this is immediately, um, this these new techniques look promising for that there might be even more potential ideas out there. So a lot of things to look out for and um, thanks for your attention.